Right. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to Hackathon. I'll be hopefully commentating this run properly. It's uh, pretty intense at times. So this is Orion Blind Forest Definitive Edition. In case you didn't know, this game has a sequel. It just came out half a month ago, I think. Um, check it out. And today we're going to be playing the game in reverse in one life mode. So this game has a one life mode, one life difficulty, in which if you die, you're going to lose your save file, essentially. So the moment you die, the save file becomes something like this, and you have to restart the game. Now, since this is a marathon, for safety, I have a, a save file that I created specifically that won't reset my save file when I die. But we're we're going to start the game on one life mode. We'll see how far I get, and the moment I die, and it's probably going to happen, I'm going to load the save file and go from there. So we're going to get to the end anyway. So I'm going to give a countdown for the run to start. Five, four, three, two, one. So, this is one life mode. As I said, this is permadeath, and the reason why I have to run in permadeath mode is because there's a glitch that is only possible in this difficulty. It is set up something like this. I start a one life save, I instantly die, and then I start another save in normal or easy difficulty. Because I need a dead one life mode save file to start this, start this because this will skip the prologue instantly and this means the game doesn't go through a few checks that reset your progress so now i'm going to reach this spirit well save the game reload this is required and then i'm going to enter this normal save and exit twice like that now it, the game thinks i'm still playing which is why i can pause in the menu and now if I load this dead one life save in that state, the game will start the game with almost all the skills unlocked and three energy. This is called one life plus. It's a it's word, word play for new game plus, but it's not actually new game plus. So. Now that I have almost all the skills unlocked and everything, I can do something quite crazy, which is play the game in reverse. So this is a glitch that allows me to move around while my ability menu is open. And by upgrading an ability after a cutscene starts, the game is saved after the trigger is removed. And so the cutscene is skipped. So now, naturally, we don't need to go to wall jump. But we're not actually rushing our objectives yet. That was a one frame trick. Cool. <laughs> um, nice, and I already died. Cool. So we're gonna <laughs> start from here. Um, as you can see, this is a brutal category. So... What I'm rushing right now is the first skill that I'm missing, because it gives you almost all the skills. <laughs> and we're missing three skills that we actually need. It is technically possible to skip one of the three, but we're not going to go for that today. <laughs> so again, skip the cutscene. Reload the save. So from now on, if I die, I'm not going to have to reload. Hopefully my muscle memory will not take over and reset. But it should not happen. <laughs> so for anyone who's played this game, there are no bosses, which means this is not a reverse boss order category. But instead, there are six world events. 
the game has three main dungeons and each dungeon has a key and an element to restore inside. So each of those is an event, totaling six. And we're going to do those events in reverse. Please, thank you. So we're going to start by restoring the warmth in the final escape. So starting the final sequence of the game. And then we'll go backwards from there until we reach the key to the Ginso tree after restoring the Ginso tree. Anyway. Again, I'm setting up another skip like the one before, skipping a cutscene, but we're not actually going to skip it. We're going to gain control during it. So, open the ability menu, save, reload. This gives us control. Now, as soon as this cutscene is done, I will get dialogue. And as soon as the cutscene is done, a d another dialogue will appear here. So by standing here during the cutscene, I get double dialogue. And this is a cutscene stack. So when the first ends, it gives me control during the second. I start the tree, get control from the second ending, and so I get control during the tree cutscene. That's all right. I'm gonna wait a cycle. You can go for a risky cycle if your movement is good. So most things in this area are instant kill because this is supposed to be a late game area. Again, cutscene skip. How did he get stop? So uh, I used a glitch that is only possible in one life mode. That gives me almost all the skills, except charge jump, dash, and grenade. I already got dash and grenade. And next thing, we're going to go for charge jump. And then we're going to start our reverse event endeavors. Oh. Naturally, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in chat. Ooh. There are competent people. They can help you. Come here. This is a double bash. Frame perfect trick, but made really easy with uh, the use of scroll wheel. What? Well, gonna wait a cycle. So now what I'm doing is I'm collecting some ability cells because I'm gonna need some cells later on. These spikes are instant kill. Didn't die. Good. Up. Up. So this is kind of the less interesting part of the run. Just collecting some ability cells. That's interesting for you because it's pretty, pretty hack and scary. Lasers is actually your insta kill. They deal something like 100 to 200 damage or something. And I have three HP. Do not want to get near those. I played this game casually, I can help you. Yes. Direct all questions to Zonaris. Oh. So now we're going to go to Sunken Glades. It's your favorite part of the run. We're gonna get to that. Don't worry. The craziness has not even begun.
Why did I bash that? There you go. Getting my muscle memory confused. Up. There you go. Oop. So now we're making our way to Valley of the Wind. Yeah, it's not too bad casually. You should definitely give it a try. And I would say the, the second game is even more forgiving. Though it does have combat, which this game lacks altogether. This is not <laughs> what you will be doing casually, rest assured. So now I got Charge Dash, which is this baby here, which is pretty fast. Uh, you know what? Come here. There you go. This is another really scary part of the run, and you'll hear me say that pretty often. Yep, Charge Dash. So the good thing about Charge Dash is that, is that it's almost 10 times as fast as running. It's 100 speed as opposed to 11.6 from running. And it allows you to do a lot of cool tech. Stomp is an AoE, by the way, which means you can Stomp on the head of that bird and open the wall. Again, collecting some some vitality cells. There you go. So now we're entering Sorrow Pass because Sorrow Pass contains Charge Jump. Normally, you would have to complete Misty Woods and Forlorn Ruins to get Wind Restored. and be allowed to ride the current up into Sorrow Pass. But this trick, which is very common in Ori speedruns, Sorrow Bash. All right. I'll take that. Saved, yes. I've had worse, uh, much worse Sorrow Bashes. It's a really difficult trick. I've been running the game for three years now. So I have the muscle memory for it, but I still mess it up sometimes. Oh. So there is a really cool strat that you can do here. But 
I will not be doing it because it requires a damage boost and I have one health. Let me take it slow here. Spooky charge dash. Now we wedge ourselves into the crack. There you go. And now we are at charge jump. This is the Dorito Cave. Sunship Sanctuary. However you'd like to call it. There you go. And that's charge jump. Now we have all the skills. So now the objective is to get to the final escape of the game. So start the final sequence. But worry not, you're not going to see it. All we need is to start it. Oh. Mystical lasers. Nothing out of the ordinary. And there you go. So now we are at the second to last event. So we're not going to do this yet. This is going to be the next event. For now, there's going to be a long series of inputs that are going to be done under this menu. There's nothing I can do about this. So, and I'm going to have to focus a bit. This is a frame perfect input that I missed. Uh. Let's try again. I need some energy to do this. Right, so now I'm jumping over thunders, and then I'm going to save in the void a few times. Not like that. <laughs> Try again. Whenever you're in the void, the game respawns you at your last save every second. There you go. So now we're landing in the final escape. We're still needing this menu. So now I'm going to start the final escape. This is going to give me a an event. This is the last event of the game, Warmth Returned. And then I'm going to, from the final escape, out of bounds and leave. Because if I finish this escape, the game is over. And we're not allowed to finish just yet. There you go. So now, the moment I see the main room, I'm going to save again and reload. And that's going to warp me to the main room. Now there's a cutscene still playing, and I'm going to use the autosave at the end of the cutscene to save drop, which means the game is placing me on the lowest, uh, on the nearest floor, which conveniently places me on the save well. There you go. So now we have the last event. We're going to go to the, the second to last, which is where we just were seconds ago. Ow. Rude. <laughs> yeah, the lava drop autosave is Mwah.
So now we get the final, uh, the second to last event, and save to skip a cutscene, simply. So now, next or previous event, we're dropping through. No problem. Just a few insta kill hazards. Boop. We've never done this, so we're going to do it now to remove the the death plane. Yeah, it takes a long time to explain everything. So, I'm going to try to explain as much as I can, but yeah. Anyway. So the next event is, let me show showcase this glitch. There you go. I save during a C dash and that keeps my speed. Next event is gonna be wind restored in the forlorn runes. But naturally, we don't have the key because the key to the forlorn runes is an event. So, the answer is the same as Horu. Out of bounds. So hopefully I place the save correctly. Might be a little too far right. Hopefully not. And boop. So now the layout has changed. So the save I placed is out of bounds now. And I'm going to go through a couple of walls. Don't mind me. Save in the void to keep my speed from the dash. I'm dashing and saving at the same time. And then when I Flatten down three feather taps, and there you go. Boop. I'm at the end of the Forlorn Ruins. And this is where you get the Wind Restored e event, which is the next or previous event. Next on the line in the category. So now I'm going to wait for a specific point in the cutscene when the screen turns black, and I'll save. And that skips the entire escape sequence. Just like so. Places me right here, which conveniently is close to the save point. So now we left Misty Woods in a specific state. And so the beginning of Misty Woods is unloaded. So we're going to use this gravity glitch. Perfectly intended gameplay to fall down through unloaded Misty. Any moment now. Oop, there it is. Again, conveniently, we're just at the end, ready to get the next event. <laughs> so this is the key to the Forlorn Ruin. So we went to Misty Woods, went out of bounds from Misty Woods to Forlorn Ruins, got the event inside the Forlorn Ruins, and then used Gravity Glitch from Forlorn Ruins to enter Misty Woods again in order to get the key to the Forlorn Ruins. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Gravity Glitch is still relevant, yes. There you go. Now we get the key, the, the key to the Forlorn Ruins. We're not going to use it, naturally. But it's nice to have. You never know when you might get the urge to go to the Forlorn Ruins. So now the camera is a bit messed up. Okay, I'm right there. Good. 
There you go. I am to the right there, off screen. So next thing. Next thing, we're going to go to clean water. So we're going to enter Ginso without having the key to Ginso. Again, that's an event. Oh, come on. I want to showcase this. Again, this is a frame perfect input. Grenade and then one frame later jump. But it's okay, I don't have energy, so can't show it off. Anyway. So we open the bridge because we're gonna need it later. Still collecting ability points. I'm gonna need them for Shady purposes. Don't have energy. Alright, that's fine. There's supposed to be insta kill lasers there, but you can just jump over the cutscene trigger. There you go. See if I can get this grenade jump here. There you go. That's a grenade jump. Jumped over a cutscene trigger. So now we're going to do another one of those out of bounds clips, but this one is going to be diagonal. The out of bounds is simply performed by having speed enough to go through a wall on the next frame, saving on the frame before going through the wall, and then going far enough to unload the wall, and voiding out. In normal runs, this is done by dying. You go far enough and die, but in this category you can't die, so we're going to have to get creative. So instead of simply dying, I'm going to go to the nearest room that doesn't have a ceiling. So right now, you very much can die. I mean, you can. Can't continue to run after dying though. Anyway. Alright, so this room doesn't have a ceiling. So we're just going to grenade jump into the ceiling and that's going to void us out and reload the save. And hopefully if I set it up correctly... Nope, I did not set it up correctly. <laughs> Sometimes it do be like that. So we're gonna load the Safety save. There it is. As you can see, it is not an easy category. That should be correct. Making our way downtown. <laughs> Rave strats.
whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, this will work. Nope. This is why I have a very generous estimate. This is a 30 minute category. Yeah, so Ginso is right above and to the to the right of here. Record for this category is like 28 minutes. No, it's uh, 30 minutes and change. Unless Shafe just got one, or not Shafe, um, Abso. But yeah, it's a 30 minute category. This category is pretty much the opposite of Marathon Safe. There it is. Good. Only took a few tries. So now we went diagonally into. Ginso, and now I'm to the left of the teleporter. I just walked right into the teleporter. So now we're Ginso without the key. Why did I try to. There you go. So here we're using a block and saving under it to push ourselves out of bounds. Up. Good enough. Let me showcase a little glitch here. Doesn't save time at all. Just for you. Ow. Collecting keystones, being bad at the game. There you go. So now we're getting closer to clean water, which is the next event. We have charge jump, so we can just do this. Nothing special. So let's see if I can get this. Uh, this strat here, I've been having trouble with this. Nope. <laughs> Alright, let's try again. It saves no time at all, but it's just cool. Couple more attempts. It just clips you through the floor. Nothing. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's simply a wall that doesn't really have a, a ceiling there. Now, hopefully I can stack two cutscenes at once. Because I didn't get the cutscene here. 
Let's see. Nope, didn't get it. That's okay. So now we're starting Ginso Escape. Best music. Do not exit the game. Cool. So now that we have basically all the events, we're only missing the key to the Ginso tree. You can't skip Ginso escape? No. The reason you can skip Forlorn is because during the cutscene, Ori is physically transported to another place. And so by saving at that specific time, You can interrupt the cutscene and be transported outside of it. But that's a special case. My movement is pretty bad, but it's okay. Boop. And there's Water Vein. First and also last event. So now, conveniently, we're gonna... Come here. I'm gonna back up the save. And this is a warp displacement. I'm going to gain control during a teleport. Ah, oh, item save. Dropped an input. I'm going to gain control during a teleport and stand on a tilted platform. And that will change the position of the teleport. There you go, perfect. Landed just in the final cutscene. And this transports me directly to the final cutscene of the game. And that's the run. We're done. Time is not yet. Time is going to be called when uh, the lady right here crosses the tree in the foreground. So, time is going to be... And time. There it is. So, now that time is called, the run is done. Uh, is the incentive met? This is the debug menu. Is the incentive met? Yes, uh, the incentive is met. Perfect. So now I'm going to showcase three glitches. Thank you for the GGs, everyone. Really appreciate it. So here's the cutscene basically just shows Naro finding Ori and you know everything is fine and cool and the tree is saved and everything. But if you save and reload right after she crosses the final line, the final trigger is gone because we skipped it. And so this happens. This is the bad ending. Naro ignores Ori, ignores Kuro, ignores Sign, and just falls. But her fall is not ordinary. She's falling through time and space. She's reliving the events of the past. It is a long fall. But we're gonna get there. 
any moment now. And eventually, she lands There you go. <laughs> Here. Smaller Naru is holding Ori. Kuro is gone. Sign is here. So this is clearly time traveling Naru. I'll let you enjoy this for a second. And we're going to move to the next glitch, which is going to be pretty simple, very quick. The next glitch is one you might be familiar with if you've ever watched speedruns of Sekiro or Iconoclasts. Now what ever do those games have in common, you might ask? Well, it's simple. What they have in common is... Air swimming. Now let me turn down the sound effects. <laughs> Where are we going, chat? <laughs> We're going for a trip. Fun fact, I found this glitch completely by accident while testing something entirely different by doing a double frame perfect input. <laughs> Air swimming is useful but slow, so it's only used in randomizer basically when you're desperate. <laughs> Sekiro Air Swim is quite fast. And then, last glitch, I'm not gonna take too much time, but this is the last glitch I'm gonna showcase. I'm gonna use debug just to make it a little quicker since it takes a little while to set up otherwise. So, you might remember this area. We're going to do the same uh, trick as earlier. Let's try again. We're going to carry this orb, which changes gravity. We'll take it and carry it to the Misty Woods. Now you've seen this. This is now common knowledge. This doesn't surprise anyone anymore, but there is a little extra addendum to this that you didn't quite see in the run. So now we're going to pick up two orbs at the same time. Just like that. And I'm going to turn on debug controls just to move Ori around and make this a little quicker. So you go through the area and you get here. Now, let me turn off debug controls just so I don't mess up anything. There you go. So what happens when you drop one of the two orbs, but you have two, is the other one stays in a carried state. But you're not in a carrying state anymore. And this glitch is called Hands Free. So you're holding an orb, but you're also free. Which means you're able to use all your skills, you're able to use your dash, your double jump, stomp and all that stuff. Let me give myself a dash. And what that means is, now if I go back to Forlorn Ruins, So now in Forlorn Ruins, the way this works is by carrying this orb, you're able to change gravity on these 
platforms, but now I'm carrying the orb, but I'm free. So I can do this, and I can double jump with change gravity. I can dash, just like that. And there you go, that's your glitch. I wanted to keep it short to not take too much time on the on the schedule, so I only plan these three tr tricks. So I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching and shout outs to the Ori speedrun community. If someone can drop a link to the Discord, that would be very appreciated. Uh, if you're interested in running any category, including this godforsaken mess, let me know. Join the Discord, ask questions. Community is very lively. We're very active in Ori 2, but we're still active in Ori 1. And uh, yeah, have fun watching Hackathon.